Hello there, and welcome back to episode 2 of my tutorial series for RimWorld 1.5. So, in the previous episode, we have set up a basic game, we have a storage house, and we have a couple of rooms for people to sleep in. It is really not much, and people will starve eventually because we don't have any food production. So, today we're going to work exactly on that. Make sure that our folks can have somewhere where they can eat, and some place where they can make their food as well. So, first off, we need more structures. I want to create an area where we're not only going to store our food, but also where we're going to keep it uh, refrigerated and process it. So, I'm going to go here for the mountain flank and set up a small time room here like that. This is going to be the storage zone for foodstuff. So, to make that happen for real, we're going into the architect menu, zoning, again, stockpile zone, and we select this area here. So, for the time being, I'm going to clear all of that zone. I don't want this zone to be interacting for real, I just wanted to have, I just want to have it placed down already. Okay, a new day begins, and our brave colonists are doing their thing. We're going to order a couple of extra trees to get chopped, so we're not running out of building material, because I see here that we're only running on 150 logs currently, and this is not really a lot. Alright. We're still falling back to wood, although we could at this point run around here and uh, use the ruins and deconstruct the parts of that for boulders or chunks. We're going to use that later. Okay. Game warns me that we need a pen for our horse. Well, I'm going to set that up today as well, I think, because it ain't much of a big deal. Horse pen doesn't need much material. So Furious and Shield are chopping the trees while Conway is building the house for our food. I'm not configuring the stockpile yet, because we saw in the previous episode that everything that is stored in out in the open will deteriorate. Here, currently, our food stuff is stored secure, and therefore we're gonna keep it like that. So. One easy way of earning and gaining food is to pluck it from the fields. So, everywhere in the temperate forest area, there's berry bushes that you can just harvest. People with a high plants skill can get a lot of fruit out of that. So, if you double click one berry bush, it will select all the berry bushes that are currently visible on your screen. So, we're ordering these to be harvested. This is a replenishable source of food that will go for a, that will work for you all the way up until the winter. That's the time where it doesn't work anymore. So Conway now is chopping a tree inside here to finish the roof. I want to mention this because he's really bad at plants. That's one thing. If you can manage to combine a constructor and a plants guy. This goes pretty well together because this is some duty that comes up pretty often and uh, well Conway is not the ideal candidate for that. Either way he has completed his job so now let's configure this accordingly. We want all the food stuff to be stored in here so check mark that and now to make sure that the food stuff is not going to be stored here, we're changing the priority of this thing. So the priority will be raised from normal to preferred. The game will now always check if any food stuff that is stored in here is not ought to be stored over here. And that's exactly what we're after. So when we're mouse overing the area here, there's still some roof missing. I'm pretty sure that Conway will be on it in a second. There we go. He's building a roof now. Wonderful. Okay, so to actually get ourselves food going, we need to go into the production tab. Here you have stoves. A fuel stove or an electric stove. Well, fuel stoves require wood as fuel, and up until we have 
electricity available, we're going to use this bad boy. This thing is utilizing steel as material, so that's the very first thing that we're using steel for. I am also building this inside of the room where we're storing our food, because I feel like this is a very synergistic thing to do. We're going to improve on that, though. As you can see here, the berries are now longer um, standing on the fields. They should be transported into the storage room there. So they got the berries went over here first, and now they're getting stored over here next, because this is the preferred stockpile zone. It's exactly working out as intended. You see all these uh, plants here in between? That's wild healer root. That's basically natural medicine, which is very valuable and should always be um, harvested. But for now, we have more pressing matters at hand. Okay, so we're bringing up the stove. And the other thing that we are requiring is the butcher table. The butcher table, as the name implies, is where we can process carcasses into edible food. So. The stove here, you can right click that and you see here, refueling it is already um, getting done by Furious. So since we are sitting in a biome where wood is absolutely available, there is no pressing need at hand to get ourselves an electric stove going too quickly. Okay, so let's talk about farming. You can notice that there's this dark brown soil here and this uh, light brown soil there. To make it visible easier, you have down here a fertility overlay button. So, there you see now, there is light green, dark green, and yellow. The yellow ones are the worst, the dark green are the best, and this, uh, the other, one, uh, other squares here are areas of normal, um, of normal fertility, that's the word. Okay, we want to do farming, of course, where there is fertile soil. Obviously, that is a good thing, but it is not a massive necessity in all regards. First off, zone menu, growing zone. So we can do this like that, and we are now going to drag and drop a small rectangle, seven and seven is enough, over the fertile soil there. There we go. So clicking in there, we can now select what we want to plant. There's a lot of different plants here, and the default is the potato plant. Here's the deal. Potato plants have a very, very low fertility sensitivity and a very low fertility requirement. That means they don't benefit as much from fertile soil as other plants. So if you have fertile soil, you can, for example, go for rice plants, which have a 100% fertility sensitivity, or pretty much any other plant. As you see there, potatoes don't go into fertile soil. That's the gist of it. To explain this a little bit more in detail, your basic crops that you have available are rice, that's fast growing with low yield, potato, which sits in the middle spots. It is a very, um, it is a crop that doesn't need much fertility and can be grown pretty much anywhere. And the corn plants, they, grow for a very long time but have the highest yield. There is also the strawberry, which is in so far really interesting as it is the only of these um, crops that doesn't uh, give you any mood penalties when you're eating it raw because it's delicious. Since we have so many good planters around, we're going to plant strawberry plants here. And since we have also quite the hunger for potatoes, we're going to plant some potatoes right next to that. Here again, a 7 on 7 field is more than enough for starters. So, setting that up like this, here in that area. Okay, we have now farming and we have the facilities to make food. But uh, how to make food? We have now, when we click in here to the stove, a screen called Bills. When you click in there, you can now order different things to be produced. There's simple meals, fine meals, and lavish meals. And they come in vegetarian and carnivore um, vari uh, variants. So we're going to go for simple meal cooking. Here you can now select how many times you want to do it, or if you want to set up a different condition. We're going to set this up. Do this until we have 10 of them 
All right. When you click details, you can also set up a lot of different conditions, but for starters, we're going to leave it like that. We're going to lower the total amount of simple meals though to five, because we really don't need that many more. We also go over to the butcher table now. Here you can butcher creatures or make kibble, which is basically pet food. Currently we're not interested in that, we're interested in butchering creatures. So this will be done forever, and this does specify the job in so far as whenever a carcass of an animal comes around, somebody will try to butcher that here. So let's get on over into our people's bios and see who's our best cook. That is Conway. And Shield, not bad. So Shield is busy, Conway would be not so busy. So you can right click here and now you can send them cooking. He's picking up some of the raw fungus and transform ten, transforms 10 units into one meal. So here goes, nutrition of a simple meal is 0.9 units. One human roughly needs one unit of, uh, of nutrition per day. You see it here, food, basically you, you need roughly that for a day. If you check out the fungus, each unit of fungus yields a nutrition of 0.05. So if we look at it, at it like that, we take 0.50 units of nutrition and transform it into 0.90. That is a real net benefit. The problem though is the simple meal spoils in four days, whereas the fungus spoils only in 27 days. So there is the problem that prepared meals will spoil faster than many things. Unlike meat though, fresh meat will spoil fast, very fast. So we have to work around that carefully. Either way, we have here now the ability to increase the net yield of our food because as you see here, the berries have the same scheme on them. So we do have more food afterwards, which is exactly what we're after. So to get refrigeration going, that is another piece of work. For today, I want to also show you how you can hunt. So here, there's a squirrel. If you check out the wildlife screen, you can see all manner of animals around there. First off, never hunt something that has this icon on it without uh, knowing what you're doing. That's predators. They fight back very quickly. What's also very important is that number here. This is the chance of the creature to go into revenge mode if it gets wounded. As you see here, some of them are more likely than others, but many of them will never go into a hostile revenge, and that's what we're after. So, we're going to go hunting, not for today though, because it's uh, freaking dark, and that is not really any help whatsoever. So, we need power to get ourselves refrigeration going. So, we're going to produce power by setting up a wood fire generator. This is by far, in my humble opinion, the worst way of generating power, but it is very simple and a good baseline entry to the whole topic of power generation. It is a very simple machine. You put wood in and it comes energy out. It is just highly inefficient and that's what I personally don't like about it. So, our folks here are now preparing the fields and every one of these plants will give us some yield eventually. Farming is a very, very solid way of keeping your colony fed, alive and healthy. And check out Conway. He's turning yellow now. What went on with him? So first of all, he's a pessimist. That is a baseline character trait of his. Check it out here. That means his mood is always a little bit worse than the mood of others. He's also in minor pain. That is because he has a scar on his arm that's always gonna hurt for the remaining life of his, unless we replace the arm. His bedroom is awful. So that is, uh, well, something that, as you see here, is now going away. 
This is one of the re reasons why we are preparing these rooms. He's also unhappy because he ate without a table, so that is something we have to work against as well. Except for that now, he's happy about the room he has, he's sleeping extremely comfortable, and here we can already see pretty decently how much impact a couple of cozy rooms there can have. Alright, let's fast forward the night, and Conway's mood is going back into positive, just like I wanted to see. So, we have a visitor leaving. I didn't interact with him because I didn't feel like it Every everything at a time. He left two short bows as a gift. That's too kind of you. Short bows suck, though, in comparison to firearms. Never try to compare a revolver to a short bow. You will utterly be, make yourself unhappy. So, here we see the prioritization of people not being at the point where I want it. So I'm selecting Conway because I want him to finish that generator, because we want refrigeration going as, uh, as quick as we can. The good part about generators is they are um, they are not vulnerable to, to water. As you see here, there is no uh, short circuit going to happen only because that thing is standing in the rain. Not all electrical devices in room world behave like that. If you put a battery or several other things out of the rain, you will have severe problems due to that. Just a side note, though. All right. So we're going to go now for power conduits. As you see these blue lines inside the generator, that's power conduits. We're going to get ourselves a couple of them here. And now the next thing we go for are coolers. So coolers are what we will require to get the refrigeration going. So you can rotate them. Blue is the side where the cold air will go. Red is the side where the warm air will go. So to refrigerate that room we do it like that. And we're building two of these guys because you do need them. Also keep in mind that you have the requirement of um, a construction level of five or, or higher. So that is something really worth paying attention to when you're rolling your characters. I mean, it is not a problem if you don't have Construction 5 to begin with. Everything in this game is learnable after all. Okay, so while Conway is building that, we're going to get ourselves into hunting. So, let's go into the work menu and see hunting. Shield and Conway are scripted to do that. I'm going to deactivate that from Conway because I don't want him to. Shield is going to do the task. For automated hunting, you need a ranged weapon, otherwise it won't work. We're going to let somebody hunt the bunny. So you can now prioritize that manually by right-clicking there. This is uh, what we're going to do. So today is a rainy day, which is by all means not optimal for hunting purposes. But as you see here now, S.H.I.E.L.D. is going in with his bolt-action rifle and doing what he can do to get ourselves some tasty little bunny. But as you can also see, he has a hard time hitting. Like I said, it is bad weather and a bunny is a very small target. So what's happening here also? There's a cougar and the cougar has decided that the bunny is now his hunting target. If that happens, don't interfere, just uh, let the bunny be. I double tapped R for drafting, so if you do that, you can manually control them like in a real-time strategy game, and if you do it again, they look for a new job. Double tapping R is pretty good if you want them to stop whatever they were doing. Let's instead hunt that boom rat, shall we? Cougars are darn dangerous creatures, you should really respect them, especially early game. They can easily kill off somebody. And in our current biome the thing is, the Cougar will though, even though he is a predator, never attack any of our people. Why? Because there's always easier game in the forest. The Cougar doesn't need to attack any of our dudes, because there's plenty of other things that are easier to hunt than us. If that ever is different, the cougar will hunt your people. So if there's nothing 
um, smaller than a human to hunt, yeah, that's what the cougar will do. So, shield has a pretty horrible um, shooting skill, that's why this is also a problem. But, tell you what, his shooting will become better by doing this. Oh dear. So hunting is, as you can see, not always a very reliable way of gaining food. So I noticed here that there's some steel lying around. We're just going to allow that. And back there are some more mobile uh, package survival meals. So, a local bunny has gone mad. So, this is a, a threat event. So, here. Here's the bunny in question. So, this is now a manhunter. We're going to deal with that now accordingly. So, I'm going to drag and drop all over these three guys now. And I'm pressing R to draft them all at once. So, I'm now right-clicking over here to move them together. A bunny is really not a, an enemy that we should be worried at all about, but I want to show you what you can do. So, people can go here into cover behind the boulders, and just like in a real-time strategy game, you can command these people. So the bunny closes in, and as you can see, my shooters are automatically going into the fight. I'm sending Furious here from the flank, and the bunny will close on in, and well, here it goes. So, we stabbed the thing with a knife, and as you see here, there's a couple of wounds on the bunny, and there's also a bite in, his, in the leg for Furious. So, very important here, before we do anything, we're going to go here, allow medicine, go for herbal medicine or worse. We don't want industrial medicine used for just a bunny scratch. This is really not the way to do this. So we can now allow the bunny, and that will, if we now right click the butcher's table, yield us some food. So it's worth mentioning that what we just did is also a way of manually hunting things by just uh, drafting your people and sending them after something. You can also draft Furious and just right click to send them to melee attack that squirrel. It's just working out as intended. You can also draft somebody and send them shooting something. In my experience, the revolver is a really good uh, ranged weapon for hunting purposes, but uh, I'll leave that to your own liking. All right, there we go. So as you see here, these icons tell us that currently the power connection is not there. And now it is. So when we click the generator, we see it has a power output of 1000 watt. And currently we have an excess output of 600. Every one of these coolers is drawing 200 watt. So what we now do is we set it up to a temp target temperature of minus nine degrees Celsius. So, when we mouse over there, and uh, you have to watch the numbers here on that area where I had my, my cursor, you see now indoors temperature is now going down while we're waiting. It's going further down and down. And whenever somebody enters the room, the temperature will go back up. And now we reach zero, negative, and now our food is refrigerated, everything is frozen, so nothing can go bad here anymore. That has been the point where we want it to be. So obviously it is now not really a good spot anymore to cook in here. So we're going to copy pot, uh, paste ourselves a few walls into this direction here. And build ourselves another door. This will be now then the kitchen after we got this done. All right. Butchering animals does not only yield meat, it also does yield leather. So let's see here. Got already transported over here. Light leather. 
this is what all the small critters yield. So we also can now, due to the fact that we got electricity, go into the furniture menu and install ourselves finally a wall lamp. You got to know that in this game, working in the dark is much slower than working with light. It also pisses people off to have to work in the dark. So it is very, very feasible to do that. So we also need now to connect the power conduits over to this place. As you see here, receivers have the purple dot and we're just connecting power conduits to that place. We are now going to move hidden um, conduits over to this place. The hidden conduits are harder to destroy. As you see there, hidden electrical cables and they are also more costly. They cost double the amount of steel, but not only are they more resilient, they, they are also, like the name implies, hidden. So they don't bother you visually that much. So our colony now does sustain itself via farming and hunting. And we are converting the, the raw food into meals. We can also go in the future into fine and lavish meals. The big uh, difference between these is, first off, you need a certain cooking skill to get them done, but you also will use more food. The efficiency drops. The most efficient food, as far as I know, is the, is the simple meal, but fine and lavish meals will provide mood boosts for eating them. So, obviously, eating good food and fancy food is making you happy. That's not a big surprise, I'd say. All right, so we still have a lot of uh, business to do here. Sadly, there's uh, quite a way to go before we get this done. So here Conway is working, in my opinion, on the wrong end. So I'm sending him to work on the other end there. There we go. Because I want that... Uh, want that lamp finally going. So as you see here, he keeps prioritizing the cooking, which is not what I want him to do, but we're going to work with that menu, not in this episode. I think I'm going to open the next episode with that because currently we have the prioritizations wrong all over the board, so to speak. It should be connected. Ah, never mind. I need to do it like that. So, I didn't draw it one grid far enough. So, here we go, finally. Why oh, doesn't that have power? It should have power. So, let's see if it is going there. That's a little bit odd. So, well. Why are these? Ah, yeah, now I see. So power conduits are not automatically going through the coolers. Previously, I had mods that uh, fixed that for me, but uh, you see vanilla is full of little uh, surprises. So it didn't work out because we lacked the connection at that point. So here we can select names for our group and or for our settlement. Purely fluff. All right, now finally the connection is there. Okay, so as you can see now, there there is now light. This is exactly what we wanted. We have to refill the wood fire generator now regularly with wood. That is the annoying part about it. This is why we actually don't necessarily want it to be our source of power forever because this can grow quite annoying, but it does make our refrigeration zone go into negative Celsius and it does spread light. And as soon as the power conduits are in our rooms here, we can then put up standing lamps if we want to, or all lamps, choose them to your own liking. But generally, bring some lamp into the apartments of your colonists. It makes them so much happier. Darkness generally pisses off people. 
And one big goal in playing RimWorld is to keep the amount of things that piss off your people as low as possible to avoid mental breakdowns. All right, I'll leave you guys there. You now know everything you need to know to sustain yourself. Farming, hunting, cooking, refrigeration, power generation, all the things that you require to get the ball rolling. I didn't mention it um, directly, but obviously the electric stove can be now exactly connected to the power grid, just like the fuel stove, and will eat up some of the output of the wood fire generator or whatever power source you run. We're gonna introduce other power sources in the course of the series and drop me your comments down below. Leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed and consider subscribing. I'm very, very happy to have you guys. Down there in the description box, you will find the playlist link to the entirety of the series. And you can also find lots of links to Discord, to Twitch, my Patreon, Paypal, or my buy me a coffee thing. I'd be very, very happy if you'd give them a look and also check out the channel membership system. I'd be very, very happy to have you guys on any of these, and I want to say a big thanks to all the supporters of Icon Gaming, and a big thanks especially to you right there watching this video up until the very end. I deeply appreciate. See you all on the next one. Bye-bye.